Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. The other day I did a video about microphones and how to record vocals and piano, acoustic piano that is. And now I want to talk about a certain aspect of microphones that's called proximity effect. Now, proximity means how close or how far you're holding that microphone. And the closer you're holding that microphone to the sound source, and usually we refer to vocal or voice when we're talking about proximity effect, the closer you hold that to your mouth for vocals, the more bassy that vocal is going to sound. Now singers know this and they use this in their performance to create that kind of effect. Now if you take this mic right here, the closer I get to it, the deeper my voice is going to sound. That's called a proximity effect. And the farther I go back from that mic, you lose that bass. It's some kind of law of physics. So basically, singers know this, and you'll see them when they're singing. They're going to hold a mic close when they want to get that bass effect on their voice. And when they sing high notes, they're going to pull back, and they're going to pull that microphone farther from them so that they can get that effect too. And it not only applies to vocals, it applies to everything. So if you're going to record a guitar coming out of your amp, you want to use, like I said, a Shure SM57. And you want to hook up, let's say this is your amp speaker. You want to get that a couple inches away, maybe about four inches or so, and record that. The closer you get it, the more monster sounding that sound is going to sound, the more bassy it's going to sound. Okay, so, and it, this also applies to recording acoustic piano. And again, like I said, you want a couple of condenser mics or even a couple of Shure SM57s, and you want one around the bass or lower end and another one around the higher end so that you get that stereo effect but you could also add a third mic and put that closer to the strings to get that proximity effect give it a little more bass and that's a cool thing you mix that into your mix adjust the levels as desired for the effect that you want and you've got a killer recording something that other pianists are not going to be able to reproduce so we're going to get into a lot more of this stuff so i just wanted to cover proximity effect in this particular video and again um i said in a previous video the sure sm57 can be used for pretty much anything yes it can be used for vocals too but just like any other microphone in the studio you don't want to have the singer going closer and farther and so on and so forth. You want a steady balance. It makes it easier to mix. It makes it sound smoother. And you want something like a large condenser microphone for vocals. But anytime you're recording vocals, like I said in a previous video, that P, that popping sound, and the SH and the S, which is a sibilance that you're dealing with. Do you want to use something that's called a pop filter? And it looks something like this. And when you have a singer, you want to basically separate the singer from the microphone with a pop filter, and it looks something like this. So basically that eliminates the popping sound when they're singing, and that's pretty much all you need to know as far as vocal recording and as far as strings and piano recording go, again, Shure SM57 will do the job for just about anything. If you want to go with condenser mics, a really good small condenser mic, small meaning non-vocal for instruments, go with the Neumann KM184. So for now, Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.